Hi, I'm Chris Potts. By this point in the term, we've developed a rich conception of different kinds of meaning and a rich array of ways to try to diagnose those different modes of expression. This screencast shows how all those tests can work together. It's not a comprehensive picture, but it's a pretty detailed one, and it suggests how multifaceted our natural language meanings can be. This is the flow chart we'll be working with. The idea is that you start at the top and work your way to a diagnosis. I can't promise that the system is infallible, but I do think it captures some core regularities in how we express ourselves, and in turn, that speakers who deviate too far from these regularities are likely to be communicating in an unusual, or risky, or especially surprising way. Now we assume there is some sentence S that we're analyzing, and that there is some aspect of S's meaning, let's call that aspect M, that we are trying to diagnose. At the top we have the question, is the meaning cancelable? Recall that cancelability means expressing both S and the negation of our target meaning M and seeing whether the result sounds contradictory. If it doesn't, we can be pretty sure that we're dealing with a conversational implicature. We thus also expect the meaning to be reinforceable. That is, that we should be able to say S and a sentence directly expressing our target meaning M without the sentence sounding all that redundant. This reinforceability makes intuitive sense given the uncertain, context-dependent, cognitively complex nature of conversational implicatures. Reinforcement is just a strategy for bypassing all that uncertainty by expressing the implicature in direct terms. We should also keep in mind that not all cancellations sound great. They almost inevitably involve some compromises to Gricean cooperativity by being too long or a bit confusing or misleading and so forth. So we should take care to try to cancel meanings in a natural way and to establish good reasons for why the speaker might have felt the need to cancel. Otherwise, the meaning might appear to be uncancelable, even though it is, in fact, a conversational implicature. It's also worth noting that we might at some point need to expand this node to distinguish other kinds of pragmatic meaning. Now, if the meaning we're interested in isn't cancelable, then we move to this entailed node. And the question we ask is whether the speaker remains committed to the meaning even after the original sentence is negated. If the answer is no, then the test is revealing to us that the meaning is in the semantic scope of this negation. That leads us to call it an ad issue entailment. It's likely part of the primary message of the utterance, the content the speaker is putting forth for inclusion into the common ground. If the meaning isn't negated in the new sentence, if it seems somehow impervious to this negation, then we call it not ad issue. We expect also that it will remain a commitment of the interrogative version of the sentence as well, and that it will remain a commitment of a conditional sentence if this meaning is expressed in its antecedent. These are all irrealis environments where the speaker conveys a lack of commitment or commitment to the opposite, uh, and so it's striking when meanings survive in these places. Our work is almost done. The final question we need to ask is whether the meaning can be backgrounded without creating a sense of redundancy. The easiest way to do this is just to express meaning M before uttering sentence S. If this seems non-redundant, then we diagnose the meaning as presupposed. It's something the speaker is taking for granted as part of saying S. So it's of course fine to express it outright before S. On the other hand, if this backgrounding step results in a feeling of redundancy around meaning M, then M is being expressed as a conventional implicature a secondary meaning that is new, but meant only to play some kind of supporting role relative to whatever the main ad issue content of S happens to be. Let's now work through some examples. On the left is the flow chart we just looked at. Our first example is some cyclists wore spandex. And the meaning we want to study is the proposition that not all cyclists wore spandex. This seems to come across when we, when we utter the original sentence, but what kind of meaning is it? First, we run the cancellation test. The cancellation is this a positive in fact all, meaning in fact all the cyclists wore spandex, which is the negation of our target meaning. The result seems fine, so we can conclude that the target meaning is a conversational implicature. This leads us to expect that the meaning will be reinforceable as well. Here, the a positive but not all just directly expresses the target meaning. The result seems non-redundant, so the test behaves in accord with cancelability. We can stand firm on our original conversational implicature diagnosis. Our next sentence is Kim managed to finish the exam, and the target meaning is that Kim finished the exam. 
We first try to cancel the meaning by adding she didn't finish it, and the result sounds quite marked, as indicated by this hatch mark. That's the lingua sign that something seems to have gone wrong with the utterance. In this case, what's gone wrong is that the speaker seems to have expressed a contradiction. So this meaning can't be a conversational implicature. That bumps us over to the entailed square. Thus, we negate the sentence to see what happens to the original meaning. The sentence is, Kim didn't manage to finish the exam. The target meaning has clearly been negated in this case, so we arrive at the diagnosis at issue entailment, and our work is done. Next, let's look at the sentence, Sandy stopped smoking. The meaning of interest is that Sandy smoked in the past. As always, we first try to express the negation of the target meaning, and the result sounds contradictory. So this isn't a conversational implicature, it must be some kind of entailment. This leads us to ask what happens under negation. So we negate the original sentence, and here the target meaning survives. The new sentence, Sandy didn't stop smoking, seems to assume that Sandy smoked in the past and assert something only about the present. The interrogative form has the same property. Did Sandy stop smoking commits the speaker to Sandy having been a smoker in the past. It queries only the present state. So we move to the not at issue branch. The final question we need to ask is whether this target meaning can be backgrounded. Here's a basic example. The first sentence just expresses the target meaning, and the overall result sounds fine. A bit long-winded and cautious, perhaps, but not all that unusual. That leads us to the conclusion that the meaning in question is presupposed. Let's do one more example. Sorry for the spoilers, but we would like to reach the conventional implicature branch. The sentence is, David met Barbara, who is a linguist, and we're interested in what happens with this appositive, who is a linguist, conveying our target meaning that Barbara is a linguist. It's very clear that we can't cancel this meaning by expressing the negation of the appositive right after it. So a conversational implicature diagnosis is out of the question. We move to the entailed branch and negate the sentence. The appositive looks like it is in the scope of the negation, but its content is not negated at all. The speaker remains committed to Barbara being a linguist and has denied only that David met Barbara. So this is some kind of non-at-issue meaning. All that's left is to experiment with backgrounding. Here I've done that by directly expressing the appositive content as a freestanding sentence, and the overall result sounds extremely redundant. So this meaning is not something the speaker is taking for granted. When the appositive is used, the content is supposed to be new. That leads us to a conventional implicature diagnosis for this appositive content, and once again, our work is done.